is Talon Sai. My name is John Patton, and behind us is his Tacoma. We're right near an airport. Forgive us, it's gonna be that way the whole video. We've got some cool stuff. We're gonna talk about a project that Talon's been working on that is sort of, a, it's in prototype stages? Yeah, still prototype for now. Um, very close to final production though. So we are gonna check it out. It's a badass tent that is for the people. But first we're gonna take a quick walk around of the Tacoma so you guys can see what's going on. All right, let's 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 see what's going on behind us here. What is Good. this all about? This is my 2021, Toyota Tacoma to TRD off-road and it is the Axis cab. I got into the Toyota game super late so I wanted to make the truck drastically different from a lot of other builds out there. So the Axis cab was the main thing. For those of you who are not Toyota fluent, it's basically just like a half kind of suicide door and shorter cab, longer bed, and that kind of relates to the tent which we're going to talk about here in a second. Cool. So coming around, uh, I work with a local shop called Running for Tacos. They've been a huge help for a lot of the uh, modifications and upgrades. So we got Alpha X headlights, all diode lighting throughout, C4 armor front to rear, including the rock sliders, a differential cover, skids underneath. Uh, I got a fancy wrap, which I'm going to be changing soon, but my buddy Jake is a wrap god. <laughs> as he calls himself. <laughs> so great, uh, great at vinyl wrapping. Prince rack, running for tacos lights. Suspension is all Fox 2.5 DSC, so it's all adjustable in the front and the rear. Deaver stage two leaf packs. I have Tundra suspension on the rear. Do you really? I didn't know that. Yeah, so it actually fits a Tacoma, which a lot of people don't know. It gives you an extra inch of down travel. It's just beefier suspension overall. And the reason I did that was because in the wintertime, I'm running my Kimbo camper. So Yeah, so all this stuff comes off, and you have a big old camper. I'll throw in a picture so people can see what that is. Yeah, that thing is what, what do you – you have a name for that? For the the sat, sat so something? The, the truck as it sits is the Satlander. This is the Satlander. And my van is the Sat Van, which they both have double meaning, so – I don't know if I've ever said this on video. Oh boy, let's sat get in. Man. People are like, what is sat? It's stuff and things, which is like the name of. I thought it was videos. satellite. <laughs> so that's the double meaning. Oh, okay, sat all right. All right, man. so I'm not stupid. Yeah, and then the Tacoma with the Kimbo on it, it looks like a lunar lander. It really does. So sat lander, like a lunar lander, but also overlanding, because I use this for overlanding like all the time. So, <laughs> That's good. I like it. Yeah. So I have airbags in the back too for suspension. This is all C4 stuff back here. Max tracks, roto pack, spare tire, and of course the Diamondback cover, which is hugely important for what I do because I leave all of my camera gear and camping stuff in here basically full time. It's like a sealed locker protected from the elements and no one can get in here you actually just watched me kind of organize i uh, did all of my boxes and everything I did we were hanging out so let's see it it's actually not bad right now it looks good we'll go in here so you guys can see that's pretty cool and uh you got these sweet bungee cords yeah i love bungees so i got bungees all over the look place at this. look at this stuff secure. bungees <laughs> for days i just strap stuff down underneath the tent but now for the main thing of the show. Yeah, let's and let's jump into what, what the people came for. So this was kind of a strange opportunity. I was testing out a bunch of different tents like in early this year, actually, earlier in the summer. And Free Spirit Recreation is a company who started up in uh, Bend, Oregon. I believe that's where they actually started. And they opened a new headquarters here in Golden, Colorado. So local company to me, they make great tents uh all over price point ranges they make super premium like forty five hundred dollar tents and i was testing out some of those expensive tents i went to return one of them after camping in it and they had a prototype ish tent sitting there they're like hey what do you think about this would you want to put it on your truck and i immediately said yes the cool thing about it and it relates to this scent too is that Overall dimensions of this tent are currently 52 wide by 81 long, which means it fits on a six foot bed without hanging over like crazy. A lot of other tents are way longer. We're talking like 92, 93 inches. And because of that, even if you have a long bed, you have to run it up over the cab of the truck. So you need to hire uh, like a bed rack that would be higher up just so you could get it above the cab, right? Exactly, which is fine. Like there's nothing wrong with it, but I don't really see anyone running a clamshell tent like this other than like the fold-out tents like Desert Armor, Eye Camper, and stuff like that, which the tents are fine, but I really like this style just because it's unique. You got to try to be unique because so many people build Tacomas out there. So 
Should we get into the tent? I feel like we should get into it. So this is the second version of the prototype. I tested the first one. It was okay, but there was a ton of stuff that could be improved upon. So this is the version 2.0 of this new tent. We don't really have an official name yet. I kind of have an idea of what it might be, but we'll uh, just call it the prototype for now. So version two of the prototype, similar dimensions. We have a hard exterior on here, and then all of the fabric and everything is completely replaceable. It keeps this thing super lightweight. We haven't weighed it yet, but you actually helped me load it up. It's yeah. probably like 90 pounds, maybe a little over 90. Honestly, uh, it was super easy with two of us. The only thing that makes loading something like this challenging is it's a little bit awkward. And then you got to like try to not hit the rest of the truck when you're right, it. Right, right. It's just yeah. safer to do it with two people, but it was not heavy at all. Yeah. So let's actually start around here. Okay, cool. Run. So clamshell design, meaning it opens up like a clamshell. So we have a hinge side over here, and then we have All right, a gasket. let's see if we can jump in there and see them a little bit. Kind of see it. Yeah, you guys can kind of see those. And you have a gasket that runs around to seal it up. This is a prototype, so when you're looking at it closely, it's rough. We know it's rough. I know all of the issues with this tent already. I've camped in it four times, like all through Expo. I went out Monday. We're going out Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday this week too. Um, so underneath here, one of the reasons uh, FSR tents can be really light is because they use a two inch piece of foam, which is weather sealed. It's called EPE. So you don't need metal or like a big chunk of plastic under there for rigidity. So this is actually kind of like soft foam. You could lay on it and sleep with it that way, but obviously there's a mattress on top of it as well. I was skeptical about this because it looks like when road debris and water and stuff would fly up in here, you would think it would get into the tent material. And it does not. It's completely sealed. Yeah, I mean, look at the truck. The truck has been yeah. out there a little bit. And even the bed, you can see some splashes up here. And Yeah, so the tent is completely sealed underneath. These mounting points are not great. Um, I think they're going to end up changing these in the future. But again, prototype. There's going to be a lot of stuff that you see that's like, that kind of looks shitty <laughs> and there are but, some things you know if there's if there's stuff that you guys in the comments see that you think you would like to see in these tents leave comments because they'll yeah. they'll read them and they'll take that feedback and if it makes sense free you know it could spirit. it could make it into the tent free spirit is the only company that i know who actually takes feedback like i didn't even approach them and i, I wasn't like hey can I, you help me develop a tent they just let me run it because I can't more than a lot of their employees do, obviously, being a YouTube content creator. So I'm testing this stuff for them, giving them feedback. I'm taking people's feedback to see what would work to implement it, to make it better overall. So the three things we were mainly shooting for was the size of the tent, the thickness of the tent, how comfortable it is, obviously all of that stuff, lightweight as well, and the price point. So as of right now, actually, let's, let's save the price point to the end. You guys are going to be excited about the price point, I think. So coming around the side here, we still have these rings. These are obviously prototype. We can mount a ladder on there. We have them on both sides of the tent as well as the rear. So you would just like hook a ladder into these and then hop in yeah, through the side of the tent? Through the side window. So there's an adjustable ladder. You literally hook it into place. It's super simple and clean. There's no place to store the ladder. So you'd have to throw it in the bed. It's kind of maybe, maybe do like under here or something. Yeah, I, I would honestly put it underneath these bungees. And the reason we did that is because a lot of tents, clamshell tents, you don't need a ladder all the time, but they come included, and that is included in the price. Okay. So a lot of people who aren't going to use the ladder, why would you want to pay for it? Right. Like if you're just going to do what you did at Expo and step down onto the bed. That's how I do it all the time now. Right. You just don't need to bump that price with an extra ladder that you may not use. Right. So okay. previously the latches, uh, this was actually a zipper. It was all like a soft tonneau cover material. So now with the metal frame, we have latches. These definitely need improvement. I think we're going to make the overall tent a little bit thicker. Right now it's like four and a half inches thick. So very, Yeah, I mean, you can see, slim. I'll put my meat paw up there. It's not, it's not thick at all. Yeah, like here's a iPhone 13. There you go. It's, uh, it's pretty slim, probably one of the slimmest tents out there. We're gonna make it a little bit thicker for some reasons that we'll talk about here. That's why the sides are not completely closed up, as you can kind of tell, and all that stuff is gonna be solved pretty quickly. So now, I think that's pretty much it for the outside. Actually, let's talk about the top quick, because a lot of people are curious about this. Sure, here, I'll hop up on the tailgate. All right, like a gazelle. Yeah, so grab handle here if you want to come up with me. All right, take that. Yep. I'm going to get my big ass up there. What? Lifted truck. <laughs> I'm going to die. Is this going to hold us? It'll hold us. All right, so we're up here. 
So the top is like a ripstop nylon material, again, for the lightweight factor. Um, on this rendition, I wanted to see a harder cover underneath, whether it's aluminum or plastic, just so there's a little bit of rigidity, because you can tell it's kind of like a trampoline right now. So with a harder piece under here, it would still be really lightweight because it does not have to be thick. And then if you catch a tree branch or something, it could puncture and hit this, but with a hard piece under there, it would be way less likely to do that. Cool. And then all of these corners are gonna be, these were all like handmade. This tent was handmade in like two weeks for Expo. So it was kind of rushed out, but it gives me a great idea of what the future of it is going to look like. So I think uh, maybe you wanna hop down as I pop it open. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> so when you pop it open, from the outside it just it looks really cool it just like comes I'm, to I'm gonna go get the good angle uh, I think the good angle would be right here even with the sun there oh yeah see the whole oh yeah everything. so right now there's just four latches we'll probably add at least one or two more to the sides and I think we're gonna make a modular like on an L track that way if you want to remove them you can you really don't need latches all the way around and on some of their other tents I've actually removed them completely. So four latches. And then just a little bit of a lift and the gas struts will take over. And you could honestly just sleep like this, <laughs> but there's more. So these little keepers right here are to suck the sides in when you are closing the tent up. Obviously when you pull it down, the fabric wants to kind of fall out. So this keeps everything nice and tidy. And we've also added these little hooks right here, or the little rings, I should say, for the hooks. So you just pop those into place. One of those on each side. And then this is kind of the form factor of a normal uh, wedge or clamshell tent. You can tell like a door would come down right here and it works great, but then you don't really get shelter like right now from the sun, from rain. So if it does rain and you have this door open, it's raining right on your pillows and your mattress. So we took a, kind of a page out of their other designs, their design book, and we added this guy. So this is sort of like a rain fly that you push out into place. And then on the inside, there's a crossbar to add tension to it. So if I pull this out, I can push it into place, lock the bar. And now as I'm standing on the tailgate, I'm shielded from the sun. If it's raining, I'm shielded from most of the rain. If I'm sitting on the edge of the tent, I'm completely fine. No water is going to come in here. And that was a huge upgrade compared to the previous tent. Let's see inside there just a touch. So what, what's going on inside here? We talked about the, the front room here, like how that's blocking you. What else is going on inside here? So I guess the main thing we can kind of see from the outside, this door, both of the windows, and the actual top of the tent is what FSR is pretty much known for. It's called tri-layer material. So it's actually insulated tent material here, which has like a little bit of, I'm assuming, synthetic fill. So when you're camping in the summertime in Colorado, it can still get really cold in higher elevations. I mean, even even the nights right now where it's 90, 95 degrees, it's down in the 50s at night. And that yeah. can get chilly when you're when you're in something like this. Right. So we camped Monday, got down to 45 degrees, which is completely fine for my threshold. And with this uh, insulated material tri layer, it's super warm in the tent. A lot of the FSR tents are full tri layer, so they're like almost a four season tent if you are really hardcore into camping. So this is kind of like happy medium. If it was full tri layer, it would weigh more, it would be more expensive. So I wanted to keep the tri layer because it's great for Colorado and you get it in like the places that matter. The doors or the door window and the top cover on the inside. So rain fly, all of that stuff is removable. You can kind of tell how you can pull up this EPE foam, and if you cut this or burn this, you can keep the shell of the tent and just replace the fabric. So it's not sewn in, it's like, if you get a rip in it, it's not the end of the world, you don't have to buy a whole new tent, you can just replace pieces of it. Um, we have removable shoe bags, which I left in my garage because I don't use shoe bags, I just kick them under my Diamondback cover. So we have two bags on each side. These are the rings for a ladder, if you have this mounted on a 4Runner, 
or a taller vehicle. Wait till that flies over. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> so we got nice bug mesh all around, great zippers, and now it's they really do seem like super duper nice. They are like, and that's something that kind of goes. It's like underrated, like having zippers, especially actually the main thing with rooftop tent zippers is that when they're made out of all metal and it's windy, they clink and clank around all night, it keeps you awake. So we actually have uh, these zippers here. You can see they're just big fabric poles. So you're not like if you're searching for them in the night, you can find them pretty easily. It would be cool to put a uh, glow in the dark stitching on that. That would be pretty slick. I might add that to my list. That'd be kind of rad. And then for the uh, closures to keep things like the bug mesh up here, there are little fabric tabs. It's going to be kind of hard to see, but these little Velcro tabs that flip over. And again, not metal, so it doesn't make a ton of noise if you're in the wind. Yeah, and up at the higher elevations above the tree line, that has... Super windy. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> a, that's a pretty big deal. Or if you're out here where we are, where there's nothing... It would be windy here for sure. <laughs> yeah. We get dust storms out here all the time. So I would say hop up on the tailgate so you can kind of see the inside a little All bit. Right. Oh, hey, this uh, is cozy. It is cozy. Did you, you didn't even step up in here. No, no, no. So right now it's pretty hot because it's sitting in the sun. I bet as soon as you open those, that breeze will come ripping through <laughs> exactly. here. Exactly. So here you can get a better look at the tri-layer material. You can kind of tell this isn't even stitch. It's like heat. A here it's like fused stuff. yeah so pretty cool you can sleep on top of these if you want to have the windows open you can tuck them underneath the mattress i've been sleeping with them closed because this tent is dark like pretty dang dark which i like you can sleep in a little bit longer so both windows open up then you can get some nice airflow through here okay and what you got a little pocket here for like cell phone and stuff yep. so these are like dump pockets for at night i just throw all my edc gear in there whether it's and you got them on both sides yeah both sides and right now there's actually no lighting in here but there will be on the final production version this where's can, the lighting gonna go uh right here you can see this is uh, all velcro so this is a loop side and then the hook side will be on the light and we'll just kind of fasten it into place there okay what's this thing this like big rectangle here what is that all about this is just more storage uh previously i don't know why but the original design was on like bungees like stretchy material huh. so you would throw your cell phone in here it was just way down it would like hang <laughs> way down so now when you load it up with gear you can tighten it to keep it up away from you it just makes the tent feel a lot more roomier and what I want to do is create probably this pocket, make it wider on each side and make it uh, like transparent, like a like a clear plastic clear, material. Yeah, clear plastic. To, so you can drop an iPad in there. Oh, movies. dude, that'd be slick. It'd be so, so cool. Like even I, you wouldn't even need like you could just do like the center. You know, you could leave the rest mesh or something do, too. do like little pockets on this side. So make it nice and wide. Just drop it in. Yeah, there. it would be super cool got tri-layer up top here as well again this is going to be hard in the future that's just pushing through to the outside all of that is replaceable we have electric pass-throughs which i probably should have showed you on the outside we'll take a look at them we'll take a look at that then do you want to see if you can shove the camera up in that spot and show the people so right here is a little zipper that you can feed wires through umbilical or something <laughs> yeah so actually if you'd want to like run power into the tent through there you could it's also good for lighting so you can hang up string lights all around the outside of the tent as well. So in theory, you could keep like uh, like a battery unit. You know, there's like 80 different brands of those, but you could keep one down in the bed, run a wire up through there, yep. and have power all night. Exactly. That's super cool. Power lights, power an electric blanket. I mean, really, whatever you wanted to power. Um, I want to put at least one, maybe two pockets up towards the front too, like smaller than- So these. sort of like this, but a little tinier? The reason for that is to power the lights. So I just have like a little anchor battery power source. So plug it in there and then it would just live in there like full time. That'd be cool. And uh, here you can kind of see the crossbar now that you're up here. So this actually unzips to get access to that. So that's how you're getting the rigidity. Can you open that wider for me? Yeah. So right there, there you go. Right there is how you provide the tension. Okay, so that kind of gives you your front porch. 
Yeah, exactly. So front porch, the bug mesh obviously unzips if you want to have it completely wide open. So another cool thing to note is that we have vents at the top here with awnings on the outside, bug mesh on the inside, and then flaps that close up. That helps keep it dark and also eliminates a ton of condensation. I've spent four nights in here so far and there has been virtually no condensation at all. So a lot of tents, you'll rub the wall in the morning, your hand will be wet. This tent has been super dry so far and I'm pretty sure it's because of those. This mattress in here is also a prototype. Prototype mattress, prototype tent. This is gonna be called the Free Spirit Recreation Air Core Mattress. So essentially it is memory foam in here, but kind of doubles as an air mattress too. So if I open up that valve right there in front of the camera, it will start sucking in air because the memory foam is trying to expand. I, I would say this is probably like three or four inches thick when it's actually like inflated. It was beefy. It was beefy. <laughs> and it was comfortable. So that's the main thing. The thing is super comfortable. Um, but right now this is made for another tent. So we either have to make this tent an inch and a half wider on each side, making it 55 wide instead of 52, or we make a new mold and a new mattress specific for this. So when you pump it up, like if you let air in, it will kind of push the sides out just a little bit. But man, it's so comfortable. Even if it gets to a point where you have to have a pump to deflate it in the morning, I'm doing it because I sleep so well in this thing. Yeah, and that matters when you're out and about, like getting good rest after a day of, yeah. you know, doing whatever you're doing while you're out. Like that, that actually does matter. It really does. And you can tell like how thin this is. So the top, especially when it's hard, will kind of compress things in there. The reason I want to make it a little bit thicker overall for like the actual shell of the tent is so I can leave two sleeping bags and two pillows in here, close it up, and then you never have to think about if you have your sleeping gear when you're going out camping. So super comfortable, lightweight, oh, the price. All right, so let's hear the price. Let's hear what that's all about. So the price point we are shooting for currently is going to be just $2,000. You said these normally can go for about 4,500. You're talking about less than half of that. Yeah, a lot of tents like comparable to this with features and materials and everything, you're looking at at least 25. I, I would say rough estimate for like a normal tent would probably be like 3,000 or 3,500. Wow. So it's going to be as affordable as we can possibly make it. And timeline wise, I just got this prototype. We still have a bunch more changes to make. It looks like a finished product already. Like it looks It really good. does. But after a few more changes, I don't know if we'll do another prototype or if we will just make the changes, see them and go right into production. I'm thinking by the end of this year, so what is it now? September, October, November. 3 months we could have a final version. I don't really want to release a tent in December. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> that that doesn't make any sense. So we're thinking uh either later this year for people who really want it, or we might just hold off until early spring, maybe like March, April time frame, and we'll have everything dialed in even nicer than this is now. We'll have the price point for sure, hoping it's around 2000 bucks. And for those of you who aren't into the rooftop tent game, like that is a lot of value for that amount of money, so. I'm that's that's it. freaking cool, man. I'm pumped for you, Thanks. you know, being involved in this project. That's. You know, he showed me this. I was actually there the day this showed up and I was really excited because Talon and I have known each other for a long time and to see a buddy doing something super cool like this, being involved in a project, that's really cool. I, and I hope you guys at home are enjoying this. Is there anything else you want to add? Of course, check out Talon's channel. There'll be links in the description. Anything else? Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, trying to be as transparent as possible. So like I said, if you guys have any feedback or some things that you think would work on this, let us know in the comments down below. FSR is taking feedback all the time uh, from customers, from people like me. Like I said, I wasn't planning on being a part of this project, but I am super stoked and thankful for the opportunity. So go check out their website too. Uh, I believe it's gofsr.com and you can check out all of their current tents in their line. Rad. Thanks, Talon. I appreciate it, brother.